Messiah really come this way? Certainly this was no birthplace for the Son of God. Isn't it amazing how He came? Isn't it amazing? appreciate your prayers for us as we're recovering from COVID-19. I especially appreciate your prayer for Terry tonight. We also want to say what a blessing it was to watch the message this morning at obclive.tv and hear Dr. Getch remind us of the great truth of the incarnation. Throughout this season, we have the opportunity to tell others about how God became man and dwelt among us. Of course, the highlight of all of that message will be December 24th and 25th with a special online presentation from Lancaster Baptist Church. I hope you'll take some of the flyers and post them and distribute them around the valley this week. Tonight, as Dr. Getch comes to open up God's word, let's open our hearts and let's ask the Lord to speak to us and equip us for a wonderful week ahead. All right, let's go back in our Bibles to Luke chapter 2, if you will. Luke chapter 2 again tonight. We look at this wonderful passage of Scripture that we saw this morning. But I want to draw your attention to just the seventh verse of Luke chapter 2 tonight for our message. Luke chapter 2, and just reminding ourselves again of what the Bible says in verse number 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. God possesses the ultimate choice. Because God is God, he gets to choose 
his plan and his way of operating that plan. God, because he's God, can choose whatever he wishes. Creation was God's choice. In the beginning, God created. Love is God's choice, for God so loved the world. The Bible is God's choice. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. The church is God's choice. Upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Preaching is God's choice. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Marriage is God's choice. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. So in the incarnation, God chooses this place for the birth of his son. He was laid in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. A peculiar choice, a peculiar place for the Messiah to be born. Now we saw this morning that Bethlehem was a choice that God made many, many years before the birth of Christ. It was in this city that God had chosen for Jesus Christ to be born, for God in the flesh to arrive. We know prophetically it had to be here in Bethlehem. But why a stable? Why a manger? Seems like a peculiar place, does it not? Why a barn? Why practically outdoors in the winter would God choose for his son to be born? If I received an official email from the White House tonight and the president said, John Getch, Melania and I are going to be making a visit to Lancaster, California tomorrow to see you. We have a gift for you. We will meet you in the place of your choice. Well, I don't think I'm going to choose the 7-Eleven at the corner of Challenger and Jay. <laughs> Nothing against 7-Eleven or against Challenger or Jay. But I don't think that would be my choice of where I would meet the president of the United States and his wife to receive something of him. Why did God choose a stable? Why did God choose a manger? Perhaps there is some significance to this place. Perhaps it is symbolic. I want you to think with me tonight about three characteristics of this very peculiar place that God chose for our king to come. Notice, first of all, it is an alternative place. The Bible says he was laid in a manger, verse 7, because there was no room for them in the inn. The inn was the logical choice. It was the choice of Mary and Joseph to seek lodging that night in an inn. That would have seemed uh, 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 logical. That would have seemed sensible. That would have seemed to be a proper place, perhaps. But the inn would have required payment. I've stayed in a few motels through my days, but never have I stayed in one for free. They always charge. An inn would have been a temporary place. When you stay in a place of lodging, such as an inn or a motel, you don't intend to stay. You're there for a short visit, a short time, perhaps sometimes longer than others, but not permanent by any means. It is a temporary place. An inn would have been not able to provide, or the inn would have provided uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, things that they would have needed, but certainly not all. 
When I stay in a motel, they don't have everything that I need. I have to bring some things with me. It doesn't meet every need that I have. I, I have to bring my own clothes. I have to bring some of my own toiletries. I have to take care of myself. If I'm going to survive there, I'm going to have to bring my own food. An inn does not provide everything that's needed. The stable was without cost. The stable was a permanent home to these animals that lodged there. And in this stable, those animals found all of their needs being met, a place of shelter, a place of rest, a place of food. The gift that Christ brought to this earth to us is free. There is no cost. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul said, thanks be to God who giveth us this unspeakable gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not only is the gift of salvation that Christ brought free, but it is permanent. It is certainly not temporary. We're not saved for a moment or a day or a week or a month or for the rest of our life. We are saved for all of eternity. We know that if the earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Oh, this corruption will one day put on incorruption and this mortal will put on immortality. So when this flesh hath put on, when this corruption hath put on incorruption and this mortal hath put on immortality, then to be brought to, then shall be brought to pass that saying, death is swallowed up in victory. It is a permanent salvation, a permanent gift. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This gift is without cost. This gift is permanent. And this gift provides all that we need. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Colossians 2 and verse 10, you're complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Ephesians 3 and verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that he who might be filled with all the fullness of God. Jesus Christ came to this world just as an inn would be open to anybody, anybody that could afford it, anybody that could get a place there was available to all. Probably out front, there may have even been a sign that said welcome. But while some reject this gift, God goes to another. That was the true light, John said, that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. God won't force his way into your life. God will not force you to take salvation. He will go to those who are ready to receive it. Here was an alternative place. But I want you to see, secondly, tonight, it was an amended place. An amended place. A stable for the animals would not have been suitable for a child to be born. A barn would be no place to have a baby. It would have been cold. It would have been uncomfortable. It would have been unsanitary. It would have been unfit for any child to be born in a barn, much less the Son of God. Oh, but his arrival would change all of that. His presence suddenly changed the unholy to the holy. The presence of the light of the world dispelled all of the darkness in that barn. All of the barn filled with refuse and stench. Suddenly, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, filled that place with a sweet-smelling savor. 
The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You see, when Christ comes, there's a change that takes place. It's an amendable place. Uh, this place was suddenly turned to a holy place. This place is suddenly turned into a place that we revere and we, and we think about often during this Christmas time because Christ came. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. In Ephesians 2 and verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the law of the commandments contained in the ordinance, says, for to make in himself of twain one new man and soul making peace. Christ came to change us. An amended place, an amended life. God saves us. It's an instantaneous, radical change. The moment that we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. But he's not done then. Sanctification is that gradual, daily change in our life by the Spirit of God that we might be conformed to his image. And one day we're going to see another radical change. That glorification when in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we are caught up together to be with him and we shall know him even as he is known. Are you letting God change your life? Have you let him change your life through salvation? Are you letting him change your life through sanctification? Are you allowing God to amend the place in which he has come to dwell? What changes did he make in your life this past week? What changes would he like to make this coming week in our life? This was an alternative place. This was an amended place. But then notice thirdly, this was an accessible place. Look at chapter 2 and verse 8. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. I don't think these shepherds would have gotten into the inn that night, had Jesus been born in the inn. He would have been unaccessible to them. But because he was born in this manger, because he was born out back in the stable, because he was out back in the barn, he was accessible to these shepherds. Oh, we have an accessible Savior tonight. Aren't you glad that whosoever will may come? There is no restriction. There is no barrier. There, there is no a certain code that we need to have access to him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Revelation 22 says, The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come and take of the water of life freely. Why? Because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's an accessible salvation. Friend, if you've never come to Christ, if you've never trusted him as your savior, you are eligible to come to him tonight. He is not in some far off place. He is not in some place that you cannot find. He is not in some place that is inaccessible to you, no matter who you are. We have an accessible savior tonight. You can be saved today. And Christian, aren't you glad that we have an accessible God? Aren't you glad that we can come boldly under the throne of grace? And we can find mercy and help to time, for, for a time of need. Aren't you glad that God invites us to come to him? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The psalmist said, I am poor and needy, Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help 
and my deliverer. The writer of Hebrews said, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. We can come to him. We can access him. We can come boldly to his presence. Every one of us that know him as savior. There are no restrictions. No one is cast aside as unimportant. There is no prayer request that God is not interested in. There is no need, there is no burden that he does not seek to bear with us. For he says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. We have access to him tonight. This was an alternative place. It was not the place that Mary and Joseph would have chosen. It's certainly not the place that we would choose for a Messiah to be born. We would not choose this place for the incarnation of a king. We would not choose this barn, this stable, this manger. It was not a place that we would have desired, but it was amendable. God turned it into a holy place and tonight, that Savior is accessible to whosoever will come. And that Savior is accessible to every person in this world. And our Lord is accessible to us this week as we face challenges, as we face difficulties. We can come boldly to him. So as you set up that nativity scene, perhaps, in your home this week, or perhaps it's already there on one of the shelves and you pass by it even tonight, Remember, it was an alternative place. It was an amendable place. It was an accessible place. Not a place we would have chosen. A peculiar place, but a powerful place. Because that place has changed the world. It can change you tonight. It can change me this week. Because Jesus Christ came. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the beautiful music we've heard tonight. Thank you for the wonderful story of Christmas in the Bible. Thank you for these messages that are being preached in this season for us by our pastor and others. And Lord, I pray as we enter into this home stretch now into the Christmas time, Lord, may our hearts be thrilled and overjoyed with what you've done for us. And Lord, may we take that blessing that we've received to others as we've been admonished and encouraged even tonight to invite others to our musical presentation online, that we would invite others to services next Sunday, that Lord, we would seek to get the message of incarnation of Christ to this entire world. And Lord, I thank you that there's not a person in this world that cannot access our Savior. There's not a Christian here tonight that cannot access you through prayer. We can come boldly with our needs to you. And so work in our hearts. Speak to our lives, I pray. As our heads are just bowed for a moment tonight, if you're here without Christ, as we close this service in a moment, there'll be some folks, some staff up here at the front. They would be happy to meet you here as some did this morning. We can slip aside to a place that's safe and distanced. Someone can take the word of God and open it carefully with you and show you how you can access a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible promises that if you seek him, he'll be found. And you can find him as your savior tonight. And so if that's your need, would you see us here at the front after we close? And tonight as a Christian, may we realize that God doesn't always do things just like we plan. God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. But God loves to take the imperfect and make it perfect. God loves to take a life like yours and mine, sinful, human, just flesh. But God can take our lives and through his power transform us to serve him, to live for him, to be an influence on others that need him. May that be our desire. May that be our prayer this week. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son to this earth. Thank you for letting him come to a place that was accessible, 
A place that, yes, was amendable because it pictures how you want to change our lives for your glory as well. Thank you, Lord. It wasn't the place the world would have chosen, but it was your place. And today, we look at it as a holy place, a place of your birth. Lord, may we share that message this week. For your honor, your glory, we pray in Jesus' name.